and welcome back. As we discussed last time, we would be starting our journey of uh, this wonderful subject called filtration. And in today's episode, my topic would be, uh, the first topic would be why someone should use filter. Second, what is the definition of filter? Third, contaminants and fourth would be the fluid. To take it forward, let's start with why someone should, should use filters and what are the advantage of filters. So basically you must have observed that you know uh, majority of uh, product which we are consuming or uh, the edible products available in the market if you see they are claiming that their products are filtered product. If you see the edible oil they said that you know uh, ours is double filtered oil. If you see uh, any you know uh, milk manufacturer or milk producer they will they'll have you know this uh, advantage of having their product filtered. Even if you see the petroleum product like petrol, diesel, ATF, kerosene, so they are filtered. So basically uh, filters remove unwanted impurities or solids or contaminants available in that particular material and that will enhance the end use of that product. So filters are used to, to improvise the quality of the product to make a better experience for their end user. So that is the reason industries are using filters. Now what, what is mean by filter? We, we as filter seems to be very conventional subject for all of us. So, uh, I had experienced that you know if I am if I am there in any social gathering and if I ask someone that I am into a filtration business. So their general perception is that you know I would be in business of filtering water. So that is a common perception people have. Let me let me classify or let me elaborate this subject in detail that filter define as a removal of suspended particles from any fluid. Now for the technical people it would be very easy to understand that what is mean by suspended solid or suspended impurities and what is mean by fluid. For the common uh, uh, you know uh, people and for the uh, for the uh, general audience let me let me identify these two points that any fluid when i say fluid fluid can be air it can be gas or liquid right so these are the three type of fluid we normally come across these fluids are contaminated from their sources or during the process this contaminants would be of, of huge range. We really can't see them. We really can't, uh, you know, feel them or understand that what size of contaminants are available. So we'll talk about that contaminants in later stage. But here, let me let me first clarify or identify the subject that. What is suspended impurities or suspended solids or suspended contaminants? So to, to make it easy for all of you, let me give you an example that you, ha you are having a cup of water or a glass of water and you are adding either sugar or salt. So it will dissolve. So that, that impurities or that 
salts or sugar which is in dissolved form with the water can be considered as dissolved solids but when you when you when you uh, put sand into it into that glass of water it will not dissolve it will settle down at the bottom that will remain in the form of suspension and that is called suspended impurities or suspended solid or suspended contaminants so any impurities which is available in the water it is not dissolving is considered to be suspended solid or suspended impurities now let me let me give you the definition of filter one again once again that removal of suspended impurities from fluid so this subject would be talking about removal of suspended solids from any fluid like air gas or liquid we are not going to discuss about dissolved solid so let's first understand this basic fundamental removal of dissolved solid is considered to be a different technology you have different level of filtration they uh, you know uh, the process is called uh, ultra filtration or reverse osmosis so these are the different terminology to make it simple for all of us here initially we would be talking about filtration wherein we would be focusing on removal of suspended particles from fluid now the suspended particles we really cannot identify uh, you know how to define their size or in what what uh, level they are available in the fluid we are talking about removal of those particles so of course we should understand that what level of suspended load available in the application or the fluid so there is there is a technology there is a different laboratories available who can identify particle analysis report and give you the clear picture like what range of particles you have available in the fluid now there is a specific terminology used to understand the size of that uh, those solid contaminants and that is called micron so micron is 1000 part of mm or you can say uh, it's 10 raised to minus 6 of meter so micron is an unit which can identify the size of particle available in the fluid uh, that's a very basic uh, understanding we should have at this stage we'll try to elaborate in detail uh, <clears throat> now for a common audience uh, we need to understand that at human eyesight we have we have our sight error wherein we cannot see particle beyond 20 micron or particle less than 20 micron we can't see with the naked eyes of course we required uh, you know uh, 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 microscope to to analyze the size of particle but if we can see any particle in any of the fluid with the naked eyes you can always claim they are about 20 micron to give you rough idea uh, there are certain certain common commodity available uh, in, in our surroundings wherein let me try to give you some some input on the size of those common commodity like we have uh, uh, table salt table salt has a has a particle size of 100 micron when we talk about human hair diameter that has a range of 40 to 70 micron talcum powder if we talk about talcum powder uh, we can see talcum powder because they are available in numbers in quantity so we can we can see them but it's very difficult to identify one particle of talcum powder so talcum powder has a particle size of 10 micron which we can't see with the naked eyes then we have a you know uh, a range of 
bacteria, virus, pyrogen, they are starting from 0.5 micron and it goes up to 0.02 micron or 0.01 micron, they are so fine. So, you can imagine that the table salt, one particle is of 100 micron. So, the subject is going to discuss about table salt to the virus, pyrogens, bacteria. So, that would be the range of particles we are going to discuss about or you can have a even larger particle in some of the fluid. If we talk about river water, river water has, has uh, you know, uh, a certain uh, bigger size of particle. So, this is what we are going to cover in our, our next episode wherein we would be uh, identifying micron in details and some other technical terminology to understand this subject before we go into uh, you know uh, depth or in, in, in designing of this filtration application or filtration system. So as uh, we started this topic, I have covered advantage or why someone should use filters. We have covered definition of filters. We have discussed about fluid and we discuss about solid contaminants or suspended solid load. So that's it from now. Uh, that's it for, for the now and uh, we'll try to cover other technical parameters in our next episode. I'm sure you are really enjoying the session and please do feel free to share your genuine feedback to us. It really helps us to improve. Thank you so much.